Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. I'm excited to have this young man on the show. It's Josh Snyder. And the title of his show, which you know all my guests choose, From Addict to All In, fascinating. Super excited to hear that journey and that story. I'm sure you'll be motivated and inspired. And so join me in welcoming Josh Snyder to the show. Welcome, Josh. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Ted. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you. I read your bio. Uh, you've got quite the journey that you're going to share with us. I'm super excited about that. So let's take a deep dive into that. And uh, you all can see his all his social media at Josh Snyder slash Josh Snyder. Snyder Music. I always want to do the shut. and it's not. It's Snyder yeah. Yeah. Uh, Music. Um, yeah. And so I want you guys to check that out. Support Josh, uh, take a look at what he's doing good in the world. So, Josh, origin story. Tell us. Uh, people are always uh, curious about how you got from point A to point B. Uh, so give us a little 411 on your background. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a loaded question. Let me see here. Uh, <laughs> a really loaded and, question. And, and just in passing, most people do say Josh Schneider, and it like blurs the sh all together. And it, thank you for splitting it up. I appreciate that effort. You're <laughs> it is, welcome. It's not natural, but it works. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, in the beginning, God created the heaven. No, no, that, not that far back. I'm sorry. Uh, in the beginning, I was born. And no, we're not going, we're not going to go that far back either. Um, but just in, just in passing in my childhood, uh, just, just answer that question and uh, not stay, take 30 hours on here instead of three hours. Um, I, I was born in a, in a, in a home where I had a mom and a dad who loved me and they still love me, believe it or not, but they, they I, so it's not had, I have a mom and dad who love me and, and, uh, two or th I'm sorry, three brothers and one sister. And one went on to, went on, went on, uh, before all of us, uh, back in 2014. Uh, we might touch on that a little bit later again, depending on the time, but essentially I had a, uh, childhood of which I felt was very, was very good at looking back at least you know as a as a kid you don't know anything different you just wherever you're at you think like maybe this is normal and that's what you read life on and uh you get your cues for um faith and and culture and all these other things but i grew up in a home in in montana state i was born and raised in a little town called lewistown montana and uh just in passing, actually, I, I when I was born, I was born six weeks premature, and my I, I caused my mom's heart rate or heart to stop completely for a few moments, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, thankfully they had a little, you know, and uh, and they was... brought her back into existence, and but I came in with a bang, and I think that's why my parents said they decided to name me Joshua and Caleb. Um, they were very devout Christians and still are, and uh, they they uh, thought of the two one of the two of the two of the biggest fighters in scripture and they think Joshua and Caleb and they say he, this guy came out swinging and uh so I love but, I, <laughs> but I grew up I grew up in a home that that loved God my dad's actually a pastor he was then and he still is today up in up in Montana state and uh at, at coming up through my through my uh pre-tweens and the just the childhood up before my teenage years it was in my opinion very normal so to speak I had a siblings and we had rivalries we had issues we had good days we had bad days and uh we were in church every time the door was open that may not be normal for some but it was normal for us and uh, i learned a lot of a lot of things about god at a young age and faith and um, it, it took a long time for me to come back to the place where i had to make that my my own faith and uh we're gonna get to that here in just a moment but but essentially i uh I thank God for where he, he allowed me to be born and, and things like that. And I'm, I'm very grateful for the, the life he gave me. Um, I started pursuing music at a young age. By the age of eight years old, I was writing my own songs and they weren't that good. So don't ask me to <laughs> sing them. I will not sing them. Uh, but I was writing my own songs. And 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 uh, I th by the age of eight, I thought I want to be a professional musician someday. And that's one of the biggest legs of my journeys that I believe that God will uh, allow me to continue to pursue. And again, I'll talk more about that as we move forward here. Um, and uh, started recording my own music by the age of 14 in a studio in Montana. And uh, started started working a, working a job to support that because recording is expensive unless you got a, a record deal. And even then, they, they, they charge you on the back end. But um, – yeah, yeah, I have a passion for music. I have a passion. You're the for only music. one who's musically inclined in your family, or um, at least in my immediate family. Yeah, yes, all my family loves music. 
but uh, my mom, she plays a little piano, I should say. I don't want to take that from her. She does play piano. Uh, but, but nobody else, you know, had this kind of desire or went on to do anything like this just yet. And uh, But it was, it's a, something I've always loved, you know, even at a young age. And I uh, began recording and writing my thoughts and feelings and, and down on paper and putting them to music. And, and uh, if you look up Josh Snyder Music, you'll see kind of where that's led today at this point. Um, but I don't want to get too far along here. The origin story is essentially I grew up in Montana and had a good family, so to speak. And then there's a lot of stuff that happened between the ages of 14 and 17 that basically tie into the title. And I don't want to jump. Yeah, in no, I, I want you to go ahead because I think um, we've we've had a lot of people share addiction stories on here. Addiction journeys. Uh, really yeah. not a story. It's a journey. It is. Uh, and so um, I'm always fascinated by if there were triggers, if there was um, things that changed. So that 14 to 17 age must be part of that. So yes, please, please share. And so let me take it back just a little further. By the, by the age of 11, and I, this is an uncomfortable subject, so I'm not going to get super graphic or detailed, um, but I, it may help somebody, so I'm going to share it. I feel I feel led to share it. By the age of 11, I was exposed to some things that were what we would deem as sexually immoral. And uh, more directly, I was exposed to uh, uh, pornography. And um, and at that point, it started this dependence on on uh, on that particular area of uh, content online. And uh, and I couldn't get enough of it as a kid. It sounds weird looking back on it, but. Um, but that actually, things like that, including, and then also the music and the thing and the friends that I hung out with as a teenager, it all fed into this cocktail of, of an addictive pattern. And I look back now and I identify that that is what it was because I truly felt I could stop any time. I could stop this lifestyle, this behavior, the things that I acted out upon in my teen years, uh, beyond the viewing of, of this, of this detrimental addictive pattern. Um, but, but through I thought I could stop it whenever I wanted to. And whenever I tried, it, it just, I mean, it just felt irresistible. The, 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 the mind was rewired. I didn't realize all the things that I was doing to myself at that time. And I felt, I felt uh, trapped. And all the way through my teen years, it was a bump and run with myself, so to speak. It was a bump and run with the things that I wanted to do. Cause I truly, I didn't, I didn't want to view people like this. I didn't want to view the world like it was being portrayed on the screen in that way. And, and, um, but, but I, I was I was hooked on a feeling, so to speak, you know, looking for love in all of the wrong places. And and this pattern, this pattern that I, I allowed myself to get sucked into and even at a young age, accidentally, so to speak, um, it it began to control how I looked at young women as, as, a, as a teenager. And again, we're, we got all these other things going on in our body as a teenager and that hand go, going hand in hand with an addictive pattern that causes me to think about things at an earlier age and, and start to act upon these things with other people. Uh, when opportunities arise, it, it, it tore me apart because on one hand, I knew that this was not going to be good for my future. On one hand, I knew that this type of lifestyle truly wasn't productive, even outside of like God and faith and the Bible and the things that God has laid out in scripture. But, but on the other hand, God lays out those things, I believe with all my heart and, that God lays out in his word that these things are damaging to the mind and body because they truly are. They're not, he's not just a kill joy up there saying, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You, you're not allowed to have fun. You're not allowed to have fun. Jesus said that he came that we might have life and life more abundant or live life to the fullest. And so often I think we conflate being free as being able to do whatever we want. But I think true freedom, freedom, true freedom is found when we're able to do what we ought, or we have the ability to do as we ought Meaning a plane, here's an example I heard at a young age, and I, I keep thinking about it. A plane was not created to climb up a mountain and to stay on the road and, and try to drive down the interstate and fit its way down that interstate. It was created to soar above those mountains and above those interstates. But so often we as human beings and me in my place where I was at, I found myself trying to fit myself in what felt comfortable, what made me feel good, what was nice in the moment. You know, if it feels good, do it. That was the thing that, that I, I heard quite a bit as a, as a young man. And, and always at the end of the night, when I, when I came to my senses, I would find myself more broken, messed up inside because I knew that this was not where I wanted to be. But then, so then I'd go to church on Sunday and at, a, at the age of 14, I started playing the, the music. And this is when 
things started skyrocketing and in, in a detrimental way, in a negative way during the week. But on Sunday, I'd be playing uh, oh, how great thou art. Uh, how great is our God? Uh, Jesus loves me for the little kids. I'd be playing these songs in church on Sunday and truly believe in it with my mind, but not letting that like, not letting it affect my life to the extent where I put up safeguards where I locked arms with community, where I was verbal about what was going on. And I, I know the struggle. Uh, I, I mean, nobody wants to talk about stuff like this. It's hard enough for me to talk about it now looking back, but uh, I saw, and I look back now and I identify an addictive pattern that wanted to keep me stuck in a rut and, and it's, and it literally reshaped my brain. And so over the course of between the age of 14 and 17, I thought I could just try harder, try harder and try harder and keep it silent, keep it within me. Maybe tell a few people here and there at a conference. If we came to that, uh, open the door to talk about our struggles and uh, summer camp and a uh, revival meetings or things that we'd go in and try to be intensive from the inside out, but just trying harder never works with addictions. Like just the idea that I'm going to try harder. Oh, okay. That's easy enough to say. But it is a whole other thing when it comes to actually applying principle upon principle on principle, getting safeguards in place, getting accountability, locking arms with other people who are working that out themselves, being accountable to someone, and so on and so forth. And if, if you've experienced any form of addiction on the other end, or even you, Ted, at any point in your life, you know, we, we, know, how this, we know how this is. They, I think they say it in AA, uh, once an addict, always an addict. And I don't, I don't like – I don't like – making everything negative because sometimes men mentalities like that can really cause somebody to just get bitter. Oh yeah. I'm working through the grind, you know, but, but I, I didn't find true freedom until I stepped back and realized that true, that freedom isn't, isn't found in trying harder and hoping it goes away, but freedom is found one day at a time, working out principle upon principle, things that are, should be in place to help my mind, body, and my spirit to focus on those things that are good, those things that are lovely, those things that are uh, praiseworthy, and, and those things that, that I was created to do, like uh, be a, a, a great husband for my wife, uh, my wife of six years, and being a good dad to my kids, and, and writing songs without shame and regret, backing the end of them, or being a hypocrite, and living intentionally who I was created to be. Um, I, I believe true fulfillment is not not found in living this life to the, or living this life from one, one uh, buzz to another, but true fulfillment is found in living this life, doing what you were created to do and working that out. And uh, though there is some pleasure, there's some pleasure in the buzzes. How did you, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. Of course I knew it would be um, because I think there's a lot of people who struggle uh, may not be the same addiction, but yeah. addiction as a whole. Yeah. What was the turning point for you? Because you you sound like you were aware that at least aware that this isn't what you were meant to do or meant to be. But just because you're aware of it doesn't mean that you're able to or ready to uh, break free from it. So what was, the, what was the catalyst there? Great question. Great question. Um, it, it, there was probably a couple of different instances that really slapped me in the face, but there's one in particular that hit me harder than any of the other ones, it, like a freight train of emotions just burst out in my car one, one afternoon after I dropped my then girlfriend off, um, at her house, I came to a place where I had just had my second or third scare, so to speak, of being a father at a teen at a, as a teenager in a, in a situation where I knew that I shouldn't be in a relationship where I knew I shouldn't have been in. And I knew that there was so much more than just the desire to act out these things that I saw. There was so much more driving that. And so at that very point, I cried out physically hitting the steering wheel. I remember looking back, I'm looking back, listening to this song that was just playing through my, through, through the radio. It was a song by Andy Minio. He's a Christian hip hop artist. Um, he, he, he made this, he made this hit this, he said this line and it just, it just unlocked the, the floodgates. He said, talking to God, he said, you want to put treasure inside my hands, but you cease because they're clamped holding on to the sins that I won't release. I want to love you and stop doing what I'm doing. But if I, if I, if I let these things go, you tell me what I'm really losing. And he goes on to explain that, like the God, God legitimate working out life, not living for now or not living for 
the the buzzes or the the patterns that are that are at least, that are negative. I mean, and sometimes good patterns, good things that we can do, we can overdo and step on thing, other things that need balance. Again, life is a, is a huge uh, balancing thing. But he he went on to make this conclusion that essentially, I don't want to gain the whole world. I don't want to do all these fun things and and not focus on what isn't most important and lose what's most important and lose what I was created to do and 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 lose the t- the days and the time that God has given me. And so that term- turning point was was a, a few different things feeding into this culmination of just mistakes that I saw, mistakes that were fed by an addictive pattern of content that charged me in my mind of how I should view the world, how I should view people, how I should treat them, what a relationship looked like, what marriage should look like, things like that. I was, you know, not married at this point. I was 17 years old at that point. And, uh, and I was, like you said, I was, I was very aware of what was going on because I've learned like the, the warfare element of, of the inner person, the inner being, the greatest wars that'll be fought are inside of each of our minds. We're all pretty screwed up in the head, to be honest. I think if we all took a sat back and took a, uh, just started writing down our thoughts. Nobody, everyone else would think we're crazy, but then they write their own thoughts and they're crazy too. We all have things going on up here. And if, if we're not trying to control and bridle this into subjection under the right things, and I believe those things are ultimately laid out for us in scripture. Um, if, if we're not trying to, to control these things or, su- or surrender our will to, to a higher power to God, I believe, um, then we're going to lose a battle. We're going to lose a battle, and those things will slowly start to feed out into our actions, and they'll progressively get worse and worse, if not brought back into submission unto what's right and what we're created to do and our purpose in life. Um, most of the time, the greatest things that are worth having take persistence. Most of the time, the greatest things, like the relationship that I now have with my wife, uh, being a father, being a business owner, being a music artist, all these different things, they take persistence and intentionality to work out. And the things that come easiest, the things that feel good in the, just for a moment, the things that are damaging but feel nice, uh, those things, they may come easy, but they have truly uh, negative and detrimental consequences in the long run. And I, I, as a young man, I knew I didn't want to live like that, but I kept finding myself living like that. So there was just this there's this, there's this polling of two different things in the inside. And I believe truly one was God and the other was my flesh or, or, or a spiritual element that wanted to pull me away from what I was created to do. And I don't have it all together now, but the turning point took place when I realized that I could not do it on my own. I needed to not only give all to God and say, God, I, I surrender, but I also needed to lock arms with other men and women who were running this journey of freedom, desiring to be free and wanting to be accountable to those people. And um, that is that has come out in many different ways over the last, oh shoot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight years. And, um, and, but so much more, so much more life has come from that. I think one of my, one of my other favorite songs is called No Chains. And uh, it's a song where this, it's other Christian hip hop artist named KB. He says, I'm so free. I got no shame on me. My wife happy and Jesus love me. Ain't nothing left to conform to. Uh, essentially, it comes back to like, I'm, I'm living free. Now, that, that I can't just say I'm, I'm free and surrender one time. Quite often for me, I, I, like as I'm driving over here, I said, God, take my mind and my actions and let them be free today. Because tomorrow, tomorrow I'll have its own struggles and for me, addiction will increase or the, the patterns that want to drag me back will increase when I start thinking about the problems of next week. Not just, not just like my own personal problems with the business or things like that, but like when I start overthinking my sobriety and think, man, can I keep this up the rest of my life? I don't, I don't have that answer, but I know that I can live today and this moment in freedom, moment by moment. And if I have some failure, some slippage, or I, I let myself go off a little bit, Bring it back real quick. Rain it, rain it back in. I love what you said. I think it's so important for people to hear that. The surrender is not a one-time deal. The surrender is a constant. It's a, it's a every day. It could be every moment yeah. of every day. Um, you, you have moments where it, it is literally every moment of every day. And then you have moments where it's, there's longer time in between, but the surrender, because our flesh wants to come in, in my opinion, wants to really come in and uh, make this as difficult as possible. We, our heads get get ahead of us. Yeah. Um, I think that the surrender itself is just such a critical part. We fight that as human beings. We mm-hmm. fight surrender. It's 
we view it as a weakness. We view it as I can do it on my own. And uh, there's nothing more powerful, I think, than that surrender. And if it has to be, for those of you listening, every moment of every day and you live for the next moment, then that is exactly what Josh said you have to do. And I agree. Amen. You really do. And, and real quick, before, real quick, the if I can leave any advice summed up into one single sentence, it's a, my favorite verse. It's my currently my life verse right now is Second Timothy two twenty two. If you if you read scripture, you know anything about the Word of God, there's a book called Second Timothy. So it's Second Timothy two 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 twenty two, and it states, "Flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with those that call upon the name of the Lord out of a pure heart." So uh, living in freedom is a threefold process, one running from the things that are detrimental or negative to our minds and our bodies, whatever addiction that might be, whatever problem or habit or hurt that might be running from those things. But you can't just run from those things. You need to run to something else. And ultimately, I believe we need to run to God, the author and finisher of our faith, and then run to God with those who are also working this stuff out, with those who call upon the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. And in that place, you can find victory and freedom today and uh, do it again tomorrow. So I just want to say that. Um, let's, as we, it goes fast, right, Josh? It does. Like, it I does. Can you forever. I really <laughs> mean that. No, no, it's, I love a testimony like yours. I, I think that there are so many people who struggle and don't have that testimony. Um, they don't know about surrender. They don't know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. They don't yeah. know uh, where to find their faith. Maybe they've lost their faith. So I am thankful for you sharing that part of your journey. I think it's so critical and there are many, many people who are going to listen to this and I know be moved. So thank you. Thank you. I want to talk just a little bit before we wrap up about your music. Um, uh, Josh Snyder music. So are you a singer, a performer, a rapper, a hip hop artist? <laughs> uh, what are all the things that Josh Snyder is? Uh, I'm all of those things. Kind of. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I sing, I perform. I, I have actually, let's see here. Um, it right here. My debut album project from, from uh, five years ago, almost now, four and a half years ago, is called Rise. It's predominantly Christian hip hop. That was what really influenced me at a younger age. And so I leaned more into that. But as I got a little older, I really loved just the notes and melodies and singing. And uh, so I'm going to play a song here in a moment. But, but I, I, I write about everything that I go through. And generally speaking, that those things will all come back to this foundation, and that's my faith. But I write about the love of my wife, my children, the things that I love to do in this world, uh, my friends, my family, like everything that, that I'm truly passionate about that I believe that will, is worth living for in a sense, I'll write about it. And um, I'll write about my fears, my failures, things like that, things as cautionary warnings. And um, I, like I said, I've been doing music – uh, pursuing this as a profession, so to speak, since I was 14 years old and really kicked into gear after I got married. Cause there's something about being uh, married that lights a fire under a man. If, if you let it, sometimes it's the, it's a detriment cause you didn't do it right. <laughs> but, um, True. but anyway, I have a wife of uh, six, almost six years now and two beautiful kids back at home. My oldest is four. My son is two. Uh, so my oldest daughter, she's her Elena. She's four. My son is uh, Kieran. He's two. And then I got a little, Little one on the way. His name is. Well, actually, right. I'm not, not going to not going to give his name out because we're not supposed to yet. Okay. Uh, but little baby, ma little baby man on the way, and uh, and so we're we're we're. Uh, Congratulations! Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. We got our hands full. Are you going to play music? What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. I got a song, and um, this song is a song that I began to write. Began to write when I was when I heard that I was going to have a little boy. So this is a, just over two years ago. Well, I'm going to take my sleep off so you can perform. Right, go ahead. This song is a song called Dear Son, and it was basically a letter from myself to my son, and then also correlating some thoughts from a man who was messed up in a lot of senses, and from a man who was scared to be a dad to a son and raise a little boy in a, in a world that might be a little bit darker than the one I grew up in, so to speak, or a little bit more easily accessible to the things that messed me up even more so for him now. And I began to have a little bit of fear. And as I began to fear, I began to think of these words and I quickly got my guitar out and just started, uh, started, uh, well, I'll just sing it. I wish I had all the words to convey all the love that I have for you. 
looking for the rhyme and the reason to show that you'll get through. In your darkest days, in your lonely nights, I want to hold you in that fight. You take my hand, I'm gonna help you up. See, it's a beautiful life. So stand up, stand up. Try to walk But when you're falling down Don't be afraid to crawl Get up, get up Yeah, you can run I'm right here with you My dear son This gets me thinking a little bit about my Heavenly Father some promises he's made me. And I heard you say you'll never let me go that you'll always be true you're in control what if I fail and what if I fall are you really there through it all who oh got on the mess you gave me your best love that I have for you is unexplainable. The measures I'll go to are uncontainable. I'll give up myself for you every day. Even if it's my life, that is the price that demands to be paid. But just remember, when I fail or fall or break, there's a Father who will never leave you nor forsake. Even through the pain, the storm clouds and the rain, He never changes. He stays the same. He can be your Father too. Just call on His name. Stand up, stand up. to walk but when you're falling down don't be afraid to crawl get up get up yeah you can run cause I'm right here with you my dear son dear son that was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I didn't know what you were going to perform, although I'm sure you told me that in um, the bio. Uh, but I am completely surprised and moved. That was beautiful. Absolutely Thank beautiful. Thank you. And essentially, that's what it all comes back to in my life. I'm I'm working through this. And as you said, kind of at the beginning, it's a it's a journey, When especially when you're talking, talking about addiction. I mean, I think all of life's a journey from the cradle to the grave. It's it's a journey. But uh, living in freedom is is moment by moment. And then as a father now to a little boy and a little girl, it's, it's just as important for me and her. But again, it resonates a little bit deeper when I think of a little boy coming up uh, in this world. Did you think of you? I, it makes me think of me. Yes. And, uh, and, and so I, I, I got to tell him up. I'm going to try to tell him up front and continue to tell him this kind of thing. And, and that is, I'm not perfect. I want to make that clear. I'm not Superman. I'm not superhuman. I'm not perfect. And, and if you expect perfection out of me, you're gonna you're gonna be disappointed. I want to do my best. That doesn't mean that I don't want to be the dad that I'm created to be and called to be every day. But if I fail, there's somebody who will never fail. And I, I believe that ultimately is the the father to the fatherless, the the great great God, Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, I I want to point him to the one who is perfect because I'm I'm sure not that guy. So. Me either, my friend. Beautiful. All right, Josh, tell them the best way they can find out about you. I have your social media handles scrolling yeah. across the bottom. 
Awesome. Um, yeah, if you want the best place to find us, if you if you is either on Facebook or Instagram. If you like our music and you like songs like what I just sung here, we have a lot of professionally done, clean quality music that's out now on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, just under Josh Snyder. And uh, we've got a lot of things coming. Um, my little group was featured in a, a short film that just premiered this last weekend from a in, in association with Liberty University, and uh, and we were really stoked. Uh, one of our songs that is not yet released. Um, will be uh, featuring a uh, that 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 short film and then and then beyond that one of our songs that is released called feel it it was featured on that show but anyway anyway we're excited about that lots of little things and then we we made a short film I know this is kind of random we made a short film ourselves recently with uh, this character in it and uh, you'll, so lots of things coming soon is basically what I'm saying so you should go follow us you check us out wherever you get your music or wherever you get your social uh, your social your daily social buzzes and uh and i'm sure that we'll, you'll you'll like what we have to offer if you like what you just heard beautiful josh thank you so much for sharing that journey lots of great nuggets out of your uh your sharing i really do appreciate that there's a lot of people that struggle to watch the show and so it's always good to have somebody come on and and share their journey so that they don't feel alone hmm. uh, so that they yeah. know that there is hope uh, mm -hmm. There's lots of hope. So mm -hmm. God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much for coming on. Come back anytime, maybe when you release the new song and the movie. Uh, but you are a joy and a blessing to have on the show. Thank you. I well, appreciate the opportunity once again. And uh, thanks, Ted. Absolutely. Check out Josh Snyder Music on your social media platforms. Follow him, download him, do all the good things that you should do to support a creative, especially one who shares his heart like Josh just did. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Josh. God bless you all. Bye-bye.